Today, we're gonna take a look at the old jump traps or underspring traps. Are they good to go or are they old time garbage? Let's take a look and I'll tell you what I think. Okay, so let's take a look at the old jump trap and the underspring trap. First thing you're gonna notice is that it has a single spring and this spring, when compressed, is gonna lay down across the base plate here. And then when the trap is fired, uh, this side of the spring pops up and that's what closes the jaws and holds them into uh, position there. Now, these old traps, a couple things to notice. Number one, uh, on the old traps, there's no way, there's no uh, pan bolt, so there's no easy way to adjust the pan tension on these traps, uh, which can be a problem because there's not a whole lot of pan tension there. Now, uh, on my Patreon, I've done a lot on uh, how to adjust pan tension on jump traps and uh, old long springs that have this, uh, uh, that don't have a, a, a pan bolt on them. So you can check some of that out. Now, the uh, other thing you'll notice is notice how curved that base plate is. And uh, that's gonna fit down just nicely when we get this trap set. And you'll also notice that it's side swiveled and not center swiveled, which I kind of like because it makes the trap very easy to bed. So the easiest way to set this is to put it on the ground uh, and step on this side of the trap with one foot and then simply step on the spring with the other foot. That's the easiest way to set it. But I'll set it here on the log for you. Um, and you don't have much of a, of a piece of metal sticking out here. So you just sort of have to push that down. And then get your dog over. Bring the pan up and the trap is now set. You can see that. And you can see there's a bit of space right here between the spring and the base plate. And that helps ensure that it doesn't freeze together if you get a little bit of inclement weather. And of course, there's your swivel right there. You've got a typical little chain on the side here. And then the trap fires and the animal steps on the pan. And you can see that spring pops up like that. Now, what are the pros and cons of the jump trap vis-a-vis -a, -vis a modern coil spring trap like this uh, this Bridger here, okay? This is a number three Blake and Lamb jump trap. This is a number three Bridger two-coiled uh, trap right here. Now, the modern trap is going to have a few uh, nice-to-have features. Number one, you can see there's a bolt right there, so you can easily adjust the pan tension on the trap. You can loosen it, um, increase it as needed. But uh, that really, to me, is the single advantage of this, of this bridger. Now, on a modern trap, of course, you can get offset jaws, you can get laminated jaws, you can get cast jaws, just depending, uh, depending upon how much money you want to spend. Whereas on the old jump traps, you just have regular jaws. Um, you know, they didn't have all of that back then. But to me, the jump trap has one huge advantage over the modern coil spring traps. And that is the nature of the spring. Now I've talked about this in the past on other videos, uh, especially on my uh, video I did on the Sleepy Creek number 11s. This trap, the holding power of the jump trap is not dependent upon the strength of this spring. Once this trap fires, the only way these jaws are gonna open up is if Number one, that spring gets depressed somehow, which is not likely to happen. Or number two, the draw, jaws are able to break through the metal right here. In other words, it's physics that are, that's holding these jaws together. It's, it's, the, it's the metal right here. It's not the strength, the strength of this spring. Whereas on a modern coil spring trap, the only thing that's holding these levers up is the springs. And if the springs get weak, the trap gets weak. That's a critical distinction, especially if you look at a long-term um, grid down, crap hit the fan scenario. This trap, as long as this spring is strong enough to fire and close the jaws, it's gonna hold as solid on day 100 as it does on day zero. There's not gonna be any decrease in holding power of a jump trap because of the design of the spring. Whereas over time, depending upon what type of springs that you have on a coil spring, these springs will weaken over time and the holding power 
of the trap will decrease over time. So which is better, the old jump trap or the fancy new coil spring traps? Well, my honest opinion is there's nothing wrong with the old jump traps. And if you can find a good deal on these jump traps uh, and you need traps, buy them. There's nothing whatsoever wrong with them. However, for day-to-day -day in and out trapping, especially given the uh, authoritarian state of affairs in this country, and the uh, overly invasive regulations uh, of law enforcement. For average everyday trapping, you're probably gonna be better off with a modern coil spring trap. As long as the grid stays up and our society stays functional, you'll be able to get new springs if and when you need them. You can order the um, coil spring traps with offset jaws, uh, with laminated jaws, you know, you can get all of that. You can get this in a two coiled model or a four coiled model depending upon what you're trapping and, and where you're trapping it so you have more convenience and more flexibility with the modern coil spring trap and as long as the supply chain stays up you can maintain these traps uh, as, as much as you want it's easier to adjust the pan tension on them um, etc 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 so these are these are nice nothing nothing wrong with the modern coil spring trap however if you can get a good deal on these old jump traps don't uh, don't just uh, write them off. These things still work. They will still catch. They will hold plenty good. And when it comes to a long-term grid down, um, shit hit the fan type scenario, there's a very little that can go wrong with this trap. Uh, it's going to last a lifetime, if not more. And the, you don't have to worry about replacing springs or any of that. Um, and to me, this trap just beds easily. This old uh, Blake and Lamb number three here is about to go in the water, and we'll uh, we'll see if it'll bring me a beaver. So anyway, that's my thought on the old jump traps. Uh, I definitely do not um, poo-poo them. If I can find a good deal on them, I buy them because uh, they're they're good traps. They're going to last. They're going to get the job done. They're just not quite as fancy as all the modern stuff that we have today. So anyway, I hope this was useful. Thanks for watching, and we will see you next time.